اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم We have come across a different SCM techniques. We have used previously the covariance based SCM and variance based SCM. Now recently there has been an addition and we've got generalized structured component analysis GSCA. The technique has been recently added to smart PLS. In this session, we are going to focus on what are the key differences in these SCM techniques and when we should use each one of them. Now, the first one, covariance-based SCM, the CBSCM. Now, the focus of CBM, CBSCM is to analyze the covariance structure to minimize the discrepancies between observed model or and the model implied matrices. Now, the approach is confirmatory, that is theory-driven and you've got to have a required or you have to have a predefined model. Now, the assumptions are slightly problematic in covariance-based SCM. Now, you need multivariate normality and you need a large sample size. Now, the estimation method is maximum likelihood and the strengths are that you get a rigorous theory testing with global model fit assessments. Now, you've got too many model fits that you can use in covariance based SCM. Now, the problems are that it is very sensitive to misspecification. And if you've got a complex model with too many indicators, too many parameters, then it's hard to get a good model fit. Now, when to use when you are testing well established theories, prioritizing model fit evaluation, or when the data meets normality and sample size requirements. Variance based SCM, PLS SCM. Now, the focus is explained variance in the dependent variable. Now, you want to predict how much change in a dependent variable is explained by the predictors, then you have to use variance based SCM or PLS SCM. Now, it is exploratory component based. Now, there are no distributional requirements and it works well with small sample size as well. Now, the estimation is iterative partial least squares algorithm. It is robust for predictive modeling and one of the key advantages that it handles formative constructs as well and suits early stage theory development. Now, the problems, one of them is it lacks a global fit indices and lacks rigorous for or it is less rigorous for causal inferences. Now, you can use it when you are doing predictive analysis, exploratory research, you've got higher models or higher order models with formative constructs or you've got formative models and you have non-normal data. Now, it's normally used in marketing, management and information systems. Now, the recent addition to Smart PLS, the generalized structured component analysis. Now, it is component based, minimizing residuals via at least squares. So, what it does is, it is flexible and it can handle both reflective and formative indicators, hierarchical models. Now, it is obviously tolerant to small sample size and non-normal data. The estimation technique generalized least squares. Now, what are the strengths? How do you compare it with PLS SCM? It provides you with fit indices and it can handle complex structures, which PLS SCM can also do. But the main difference is it provides fit indices. There is one other difference. We are going to discuss it later. Now, obviously, it is less widespread and fewer software options. So, Smart PLS offers it uh, recently and it's going to get more developed as well. And I'm going to do some videos on it as well. So, software options. Now, we have uh, some software options in terms of Smart PLS, which is a good thing. Now, when to use? When you've got complex component models that is hierarchical modeling mixed measurement types when fit indices are needed in component based frameworks now generalized structured component analysis now one of one other advantage is that it minimizes residuals via least squares which means that the method aims to reduce the differences between the observed data 
and predicted values generated by the model. Now, how GSCA minimizes the residuals? These are the differences between the observed data points and the values predicted by the model. In SCM, residuals represent the unexplained variance. The higher the unexplained variance, the problematic the model. The less are the model fit or the poor is the model fit. So why do you want to minimize the residuals? The goal is to ensure that the model fits the data well. Now, if there are or if there are discrepancies between the observed data and the predicted data, then the model is not fitting the data well. That's why you need to reduce the residuals. Now, GSCA ensures that the model's predictions align closely with the actual observed data. So again, uh, this is the summary of the comparison that we earlier did. Now it's focusing or the focus of CBSCM is minimizing the discrepancy between the observed covariance metrics and the model implied covariance metrics. PLSSCM maximizes the explained variance because you are trying to explain the variance in the outcome variables and GSCA directly minimizes the residuals via least squares, making it more similar to traditional regression techniques, but applied to structure or structural, but applied to structural equation models. I hope this short session would have helped you understand the differences between the three different techniques. Thank you very much.